we're going to take a look at a legal problem called word search number two. So given a m times n board of characters and a list of strings, which is words, uh, return all the words that are on the board. So each word must be construct from letters or sequentially adjacent cells, where adjacent cells are horizontally or vertically neighboring. The same letter cell might not be used more than once in a word. So you can see here we have a matrix, and in this case we want to find all the we want to find, you know, the words that are contained in the words list, right, or the words array, or the string array. Um, in this case, you can see we're given a 2D array, which is our board, and then this is our string array, which represents all the words, right, in our dictionary. And all we're trying to do is we're trying to find these words in our board. If they do not have it, then we don't add it onto our list. If they do contain in our board, then we just add it onto our list, and then we just return that list at the output, right? So you can see here we have O-A-T-H, right, which is part of this word. And then it's inside our matrix, so we add it onto their list. And then we also have EAT, it is basically also inside our words. So in this case, we basically add this word onto our result list, right? Um, so let's say we have a, another example, right, where we have A, B, C, D. And then in this case, the words is A, B, C, D, or A, B, C, B, right? So, so just like the question said, uh, we can only use the same, we cannot use the same letter. Uh, more than once in a word. So this is a word. So in this case, we cannot use A, B, C, and then we use that word again, right? So in this case, it won't work. So in this case, there is no words that we can find in our matrix. So we just return an empty list. And constraints is that we have a uh, M times N grid, right? And then in this case, you can see M is basically number of rows that we have, and then N is number of columns that we have. Uh, we're guaranteed to have at least uh, one cell in our grid and um, in this case with uh, for each and every single letters in our matrix it's guaranteed to be lower letters lowercase letters right so to solve this problem what we can do is we can do what we did before in word search number one where word search number one we're trying to use backtracking and DFS to solve the problem right if the current letter or the current cell or the current position in the matrix that we're that we're visiting is not uh, contain in the word that we're traversing, right? The word that we want to search, then we basically can be able to cancel the path of searching. We can backtrack and then we go for a different path, right? Which is exactly what we're going to do in this problem. But in this case, we have multiple words in our words, in our words array, right? So in this case, we, we want to find multiple words while we traverse the, the matrix. So let's say we have a situation where, you know, we're starting at the top left of our matrix. And in this case, O, what we have to do is we have to check to see if O is a prefix for any of those strings that we have in the words. In this case, if not, then we move on to the next word, right? Or the next, next cell. In this case, O is a prefix of a word and the words array. So in this case, is this, this word right here, right? So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do our DFS for the top, for our left, for our right, uh, for our bottom as well, right? So in this case, the next letter in this case is A. This, those two are out of bound. E is not basically OE is not a prefix for any of those strings. So we go for OA, right? OA is a prefix of, of this string right here. Then in this case, we do a DFS for all of those paths, right? And then we also have going to be having a, another 2D array called visited to keep track of the visit cell so we don't traverse back right using the same uh letter again for you know for our 2d array right um so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to do our dfs for all the path and then you know once we go to oaa right we have to you know iterate through the entire words array to find to see if the current string right in this case oaa is a prefix of any of those strings that we have in words so you can see that this is basically going to increase the co complexity here, right? Because for each and every single uh, cell that we have to that we have to visit, we also have to do a, this linear scan for you know all the words that we have in the array, and then for each and every single word, we have to compare to, to see if the current word is a prefix of any of those words in the words array. So what we can do instead is we can probably use a data structure like a try or like a suffix tree. Right and be able to um, um, be able to keep track of the words 
and then we save it in a try, right? Just like this. And then for example, in this case, this word right here is gonna be like this. And in this case, this word right here is here. And then let's say we have dog and we also have dogs, right? So we can save it onto a try. And then let's say we have dig, then we will save on a, save onto a try, right? So what we can do is that we can basically say, okay, this is the first letter. So we check to see, hey, is our current tree, the first level, do we have an O in, in our try? In this case, we do. Okay, so then we continue. So once we visit the nest cell, in this case E, then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna check to see if this, this node right here has an E in its, uh, in its children. In this case, we don't. So in this case, we're going to backtrack. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go onto the right side. In this case, right has a, uh, has a letter A. So we know that A is inside the children for this, for this node. Then we're going to DFS this path, right? And then what we're gonna do is that, hey, we, we wanna see, we wanna go to the right, in this case, A, because the top is out of bound, the left is visited. So A, in this case, is not inside the children for this node. So then we backtrack, so we go to down downward, right? So we have T. So T is part of this uh, children for this node. So then we're gonna do our DFS for all the path, right? In this case, E, in this case, E is not there, right? E is not a children of T. H in this case is it sorry A is not a children of T and then H in this case is a children of T so we go down this path and then what we can do for our uh, try is that we can for each and every single node we can have a variable called is word and then in this case this if this current node is a word then we can basically add it onto our result list right and then this result list is what we're going to return at the end for example you can see here eat and this word right here right. So in this case, what we can do is that we can just add this word. If this node is actually a word, we can just add this word onto the, the, you know, the list. So last word that we visit is H. In this case, H, what we can do is that we know this is a word. So we add it onto, you know, the, the string that we traverse in this case, O-A-T-H, we can add the string onto the result. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to do our DFS, right? So in this case, we have K. K is not part of, is not children of this. F is not part of this. I is not part of this, T is already visited. So therefore, in this case, we done our, all the path that we traverse. And so in this case, we can backtrack, right? We backtrack to T, we exhaust all the options for T, right? And then we backtrack to A, we, we exhaust all the option for A. O, we exhaust all the option for O. And then we come back to this word right here, or this letter right here. And then in this case, we exhaust all the option for O, then we come back to a different cell, right? In this case, A, in this case, uh, there's no, you can see in our try, right? There's no letter that start with A, so there's so we continue, right? So we basically just iterate each and every single cell, right? If current cells letter contain in our try, then we're going to do our DFS to explore all the options, right? So for example, let's say we have dog, right? Once we visit G, we know this is this is a word, so we just add DOG onto our result list, right? And then we don't stop there, we will continue to traverse. And then in this case, um, we also have S, so in this case, it's also a word, so we add it onto the result, right? So let's say we have another example where we have a 2D array, which is, this is our 2D array, and then we have, these are our words, right? We have HKFL, and then we also have HL, uh, which is only two words in our words array. And then, and then basically after we build our try, right? You can see this is our try node initially, and then this try node has a child of no H, and this child of no H has two children, has a no K and no L. And this is, and after we visit this node, right? In this case, this is actually a word. So this is word variable. We're gonna turn it into a true, right? Um, and then what we're gonna do then is we're going, we also have a F and L, right, in our try. So in this case, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start traversing our 2D array by starting from the top left. So in this case, for the current word, is its current letter is H. We know that H is actually inside where a child node of the current try node. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do our DFS, right? So we add H onto our string builder and we mark H as visited. So the next letter, in this case, we're gonna do our DFS. We're gonna do our DFS on the right first. So in this case is a K. So we know that K is a child node of no H. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to add K onto uh, the stream builder and we check to see, of course, for each iteration or in this case for each DFS, we have to check to see 
if the current character is a word. If it is a word, we just add a current string builder, convert it to a string, add it onto the result list. If not, we're gonna continue, right? Um, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our DFS. The left is visited, the top is out of bound, the right is out of bound, so we're gonna go down. So we have F, right? So in this case, our string builder, we add F onto our string builder. And then in this case, F is not a word, so we continue to do our DFS, right? So we're gonna go to the left. So in this case, we have an L, right? In this case, L, in this case, we have, is a word, right? In this case, the last node is a word. So in this case, we add it onto our string builder and then we convert it onto, uh, into a, um, a string and then we add it onto the result list, right? So then what we have to do after we add the current string, right, which is our current string builder onto the result list, right, is what we have to do is we have to backtrack, right? But the thing is that when we backtrack, right, you can see that those letters are marked as a circle. That basically means that it's visited. So what we also have to do for our backtracking is that we have to mark the current cell as unvisited. And not only that, we have to delete it from the string builder, right? So in this case, we after we exhaust all the option for L, we backtrack, we remove the last letter that we added on our string builder and mark this current cell as unvisited. And then for this cell, we have to remove it from our string builder. And then we also have the mark as unvisited because, and then we have to traverse all the options, right? Because in this case, we exhaust all the options for this letter. Then we're gonna go to K. We exhaust all the options for K, then we're gonna go remove K and then we mark this as unvisited. Then we go back to H, we remove H, we exhaust all the options. Well, but the thing is we have we still have L, right? So in this case, what we have to do is we we have to go down to the other path, right? In this case, we already went to the left. The top is out of bound. The right, we already exhausted all the options for that. And then now we can go down to L, right? In this case, L is actually a child node of H. So in this case, we try with all the options for L. In this case, F is not inside the child node of L. These are all visited uh, out of bound and then this the, the above one is visited. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to return, right? In this case, we're going to backtrack. So, uh, but this is a word. So in this case, we're going to add it onto result list. And then we backtrack. We, we, we have to make it unvisited. We remove that out of the uh, stream builder. And then in this case, we visit all the options for H. So now we're going to go for the next character, right? And then this character is not in the try node, or in this case, not a child node of this child node, a try node. So in this case, we're going to continue, right? So you can see that this is basically how we're going to solve the problem. Uh, let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So to do this in code, first, what I did is I create this class called try node, which basically has a table that keeps track of, you know, its current node, uh, current nodes children. And then we also have a, um, basically a word, right? Is word to see if the current node is a word or not, right? By default, we set the current word is a false, right? So it's not a word. Um, so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna initialize, initialize this try node, right? This try tree or suffix tree. And then we're gonna have a list, right? That we're gonna return at the end, which is basically the, com uh, the current uh, word that we find in our 2D array or our board. We have our M and N, which is basically number of rows and number of columns that we have in our board. And we, we have a board, which is, this is like a global variable. We also have a visited Boolean array, 2D Boolean array to keep track of the visited cell, right? So first, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna insert each and every single words onto the try. So we have this insert a word function, and then we're calling, we're passing the, a word, and then we're basically just converting it to a character array. And then for each and every single character that we have in the array, uh, we're just gonna construct this try right this try in this case you can see here uh if this current node dot map so if this current character is not a children of this current node then we're going to build it right we're going to create it and then we're just going to um, get the current node is equal to current node dot map dot get the current character right and then we can move on to the next iteration we can basically kind of like building this try right and at the end for the last word that we added we're going to make the current node as is a word. We're going to set it to true. So once we build our try, what we're going to do is that for each and every single character in the board contains in the try, we do a DFS, right? So in this case, we basically do our traditional loops. Uh, nest the loop. We basically iterate each and every single character in, in our board. If the current character in this case is actually 
a, um, it contains in our try, right, in our try, that we're gonna do our DFS, right? So for each and every single cell, uh, we first make sure that it's not out of bound, and then we first, and then check to see if it's, you know, if it's not visited, right? And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna first check to see if the current character is in the try. If it's not in the try, we can just return, right? And then we go on for next iteration. But if it's in the try, as you can see here, we 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 basically for each and every iteration, we basically um, have a visited, right? Uh, 2D Boolean array, and then we also have this character, we pass it in. Um, and you can see here, this is our current character. We first check to see if it's in the try. If it's not in the try, we return. Otherwise, if it's in the try, so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add the current character onto our stream builder. And then we're gonna say current try is equal to current try.get. So we have to get the current try node for the current character. And then we're gonna mark this current cell as visited so that we check this, so that we can be able to check to see if the current try, right, our current try node is a word, right? If it's a word, then we can add the current string builder onto the result list. And then we're gonna set the current try is a word to false. And the reason why we do this is because so that, um, you know, next time when we iterate to this word again, right? Or in this case, next time, if we iterate to this character again, right? Um, in this case, we are we're basically setting as a false because we already add this word onto the result already, right? We don't want to add another word duplicate string onto the result uh, many times, right? Um, so then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our classic DFS, right? We're gonna do our do our DFS for all four directions. After that's done, uh, we have then we have to remove the last element, right? We basically do our backtracking, right? We basically la remove the last element that we insert on our string as well as we have to mark the current position to false so that, you know, just like I mentioned for this example, right? The previous example that we had in this case, after we did the whole thing, we have to backtrack because in this case, if we don't mark these things as, as not visited, then in this case, it's not possible for H to go down to I or L, right? In this case, it will not be possible. So in this case, we have to mark in this case, we have to backtrack to the original position and mark those cells as unvisited and remove that off of the stream builder so that in this case, I can go down to a different path, right? So, and then I can mark this as visited, add it onto the stream builder and then exhaust all the options from there, right? So you can see that this is basically how we solve the problem.